Hi, everyone, and welcome to Baby Center Answers. This is a live Q&A series addressing the most common parenting questions and topics by providing expert solutions so you can tackle parenting with confidence. Today, I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about all things Amazon Baby Registry. I'm Olivia DeLong. I'm the Senior Health Editor here at Baby Center and the host of today's event. And I'm joined by Baby Center Registry Expert and third time expecting mom, Robin Hillmantle. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Today, we're going to be talking all about, like I mentioned, Amazon Baby Registry. So the benefits of setting up an Amazon Baby Registry and so much more. I have a three-year-old daughter myself, and man, I remember how just intimidating and overwhelming, but also fun and rewarding setting up a registry can be. So Robin, before we dive in, we have lots to cover today. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm also an editor at Baby Center, and a lot of what I work on is stories about baby products and gear. For example, our guide to the best strollers or the best high chairs, and we'll be sharing a lot of links to that content throughout the chat. Um, and I've learned so much working on these articles, but I'm also a mom to two sons. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, um, and I am, as you referenced, currently pregnant, 37 weeks with another boy on the way. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be busy. Um, but even though I'm a, you know, third time expecting mom, I still remember that feeling of being pregnant with my first son and just being so stressed about picking all the right products for my baby registry. Um, I think that's super common and there, you know, on, on the one hand, you're spending a lot of money, your friends and family are spending a lot of money. You want to make sure that it's all worth it. But also, I think it's totally normal to feel like this is kind of your first opportunity to show you're a good parent by picking the right thing for your babies. So I just want to start by saying everyone on this call is a good parent. Um, you know, it doesn't matter which baby products you pick. Um, but having had experience with some different products, there are some that can make your life a little bit easier than others. So I'm so excited to help share what I've learned as an editor here and as a mom. Awesome. I am so looking forward to this conversation. Um, a few, I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. So of course, a big, big thank you to Amazon for sponsoring this event. We're so excited to talk about just the ins and outs of creating a baby registry on Amazon. Um, and then of course, as usual, we'll be recording the event. So everyone here who signed up for the event will get a link later in case you have to drop off for any reason. Um, and then in really exciting news, we're going to be giving away a $300 Amazon gift card to enter. Just make sure that you're signed up for an Amazon baby registry, and we will explain how to enter towards the end. So stay tuned until then if you can. And then please submit any questions throughout using the Q&A feature. We're going to, we've actually saved time towards the end to answer any specific questions that we can. Robin's our expert, so she'll answer as many as we have time for at the end. So feel free to put those in the Q&A. So let's just get started with the basics, Robin, if you're ready. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about why we need a baby registry in general? Yes, definitely. Um, so even if you don't think you need a baby registry, I really like to recommend creating one. And there are a few reasons for that. Um, so first and foremost, people are going to buy you presents. Um, I tried really hard at my first baby shower to say I didn't want presents. Um, but I promise you people will insist and it is way better to just tell them what you want and get what you want. Um, but also I didn't realize when I was a first time mom, baby registries actually come with a lot of perks. Um, a lot of them have welcome boxes, which is kind of a thank you gift that you get for signing up for a baby registry. It has a lot of great samples and baby products in it. And we're actually going to show what comes in the Amazon welcome box soon here. Um, also, there's a completion discount often for anything that people don't buy you off of your registry. Um, the concept behind this is like as you get close to your due date, if there are things left, you can actually use that discount to buy things for yourself. So you can save a lot of money that way. It's great. Um, baby registries also really, truly do help you stay organized. You can just kind of keep track more easily and make sure that you have everything that you need and want for your baby. 
Um, and I have to say, you know, I could go on with the perks of baby registries, um, but I do genuinely believe that Amazon has the best perks across the board. Um, it's the most popular option, definitely among baby center users. And it's also the registry that I personally use before I even worked at Baby Center. Um, so I'm very excited to dive in more today into all things Amazon Baby Registry. Yes, me too. Um, can you go through in depth a little bit more about the benefits of an Amazon registry? I think we all know and love Amazon. You know, I feel like something's showing up at my doorstep every single day, especially since becoming a mom. Can you talk about the benefits of creating a baby registry specifically on Amazon? Yes, definitely. Um, so like you alluded to, there is a very wide selection of products for Amazon. They have anything you could possibly need, um, which is great when you have an Amazon account, but it also means that when you're creating a baby registry with them, that you can add anything you need to your baby registry. It's just such an extensive selection. Um, it's also very easy for friends and family to use because so many people are on Amazon and are familiar with it. Um, and I can guarantee you that you will hear from your annoying uncle or that like friend who always has an opinion on things if your baby registry is not easy to use. So something to keep in mind. That is very true. Yes. <laughs> um, also, there are free returns on gifts from friends and family for a year, which is a huge benefit. Um, no matter how much research you do and how much you try to register for the perfect things, there will be some items that you're like, why did I register for this? Um, so it's nice that anything gifted to you, you can return for up to a year. If you buy something yourself off your registry and it's a baby product, you also have a 90 day return window, which is a little bit more generous than the standard 30 day return window for most products. Um, and then also we talked a little bit about the welcome box. If you're a prime member, then you get that free welcome box for signing up for a baby registry. And we'll share more on this in a bit. Um, and then the last big benefit that I like to highlight is that 15% completion discount on anything remaining on your registry that friends don't purchase for you. You can save up to $300, which really adds up. Um, and that's also why we're giving away that great $300 gift card today. I feel like I didn't know much, it seems like, when it was just four years ago. Uh, but the completion discount, there's just so many things that parents may not know about the, the perks of registries, specifically at Amazon. So thanks for sharing those. Um, so would you like to go ahead and just unpack the welcome box and kind of show us what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have one here. While I'm pulling it out, I will flag, um, you do have to be an Amazon Prime member to get this. So we're going to share a link in the chat to sign up for Prime if you are not a member already. Um, and there are a couple of steps that you have to follow to claim your welcome box. Uh, it's not difficult. It's things like checking off items on your checklist. Um, also, either you or a friend or family member have to purchase something off your registry. But we're also going to share more info in the chat about exactly how to do that. Not hard to claim. Um, so it's called a welcome box. It does get mailed to you in a box. And then inside there's this cute bag. Um, I love the color. We'll definitely be using it for more things in the future. I just have to say it actually is like full of things. I'm just going to pull out a few right now. We don't have time to go through all of them. Um, but you know, part of my job is keeping an eye on all the different registries, welcome boxes. And this is a great one with tons of good swag. Um, so the first thing I'll highlight here is there are a few sample um, baby washes. So this is great to get all these samples because um, your baby might gravitate toward one product over another you as a parent might prefer the smell or the touch and feel of one. So it's really nice to get a bunch of samples and be able to try them out before you invest in full-size products. I think it's good too, because you don't know, maybe, you know, I had, my daughter had a little bit of a skin condition that required very sensitive products. And so there's probably a variety of that type of thing too. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, certain things might trigger your baby that wouldn't trigger another. So it's very nice to be able to test them. Um, 
bottles and pacifiers or something else that I'm going to show you. There's a cute little pacifier in here or something else that your baby might like one and not the other. And you like can't figure out why, but it's just one of the quirks of parenting. Um, this man pacifier has a really cute little bear on it. I don't know if you can see. Um, so it's really nice to start your bottle collection and your trial and error with this in your welcome box, the man bottle and pacifier. Um, and then there also are some breastfeeding supplies in here. There's some from Lansino. So there are breast milk bags here and also some nursing pads. I have to say the Lansino breast milk storage bags are my favorite storage bags. I've tried a few and the great thing about them is that they lay flat in your freezer, which means that you can freeze more breast milk and just have more room in your freezer, which is super handy. We use those as well. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And then something I love about this welcome box is there are more full-size products than you would normally get in a welcome box. So here, this is super cute. This Carter's bodysuit. Um, it's so soft. I'm excited to put this on my baby. Yeah. Also, he's a, a third child, so he's going to get a lot of hand-me-downs. It's nice. I was going to say, that's at least one new thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the there's this swaddle me organic swaddle here. This comes with um, really handy Velcro tabs. So you don't have to learn all the like ins and outs of swaddling. It's super easy to use. Um, excited to use this as well with my baby. Um, and like I said, there's a ton more in here. But the last thing I'm going to call attention to is there is like a whole stack of coupons and uh, just vouchers for more free trials. So you really just get like a ton of good products in this welcome box. Um, honestly, this alone is worth it to create an Amazon registry. That's awesome. We, we had so much trouble with different bottles. I felt like we were buying like five different types of bottles and then she wouldn't use one and we would just have a pack of bottles. So it's nice to be able to have a few, like one of each so that you can try for sure. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So glad you could walk us through the visual. I think that's such a great perk as well. Um, and just kind of a good view of like all the different products that are out there. Um, Okay, so we have a lot to get through. So I was thinking we would just head right into it. Um, I think a lot of the questions we get from our baby center community are just all about what exactly to put on their ba baby registry, on their Amazon registry. And so could you just walk us through those big ticket items that are kind of like the musts? Of course, everyone can you know create the registry that they would like to have, but the things that you think are maybe the most important to add to their Amazon on registry. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I will say, you know, this is not a comprehensive list. There are a lot of things that depending on your exact circumstances, you might want to add to your registry that we're not going through today, but we're covering a lot of the more expensive purchases since I know those are the ones that I really agonized over. Um, want to give some insight into those. And if you want something super comprehensive, Amazon also has a great checklist that whenever you sign up for a baby registry, you can use that to kind of reference, like, am I missing anything on my registry? Um, so the first thing I'd love to talk about is car seats. Um, and I think you'll see a common theme for all of these is that there is no one perfect product for every baby or every family. It is going to depend on your circumstances. So um, I'm going to go through some of the questions you should ask yourself, the different categories for each type of product so that you can make a really informed decision about which one will be best for you. Um, for car seats, the most important thing I would start with is if you're going to get an infant or a convertible car seat. Um, and people love infant car seats because a lot of times they'll just like click from your car into your stroller and they become a kind of like seat in the stroller for your baby. You don't have to deal with unbuckling them and moving them from one device to another. Um, but on the flip side, infant seats, you know, they are a little smaller and lighter. 
And that means that your baby's going to outgrow it sooner. So probably around the time your baby is one year old, but it might even be when they're nine months or so, if you have a baby that's a little bit on the bigger side. Um, so if you want something with real staying power, you can also get a convertible car seat and definitely like check the weight limits before you buy anything to make sure that it's compatible for a newborn, but a lot of convertible car seats are, and then you can just use it from the newborn stage all the way to, you know, depending on the car seat, your child might be like five to seven, even older. So you really get a lot of bang for your buck with the convertible car seats. Um, some other things to keep in mind, if you have a car and especially if you have a smaller back seat, definitely check the dimensions, make sure that it fits in your car, especially if you have multiple kids and multiple car seats that you're trying to fit in that rear seat like me. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, did you have to go get a bigger car too? <laughs> um, we didn't, we, our plan is to like jigsaw puzzle the, Love the it. car seats in, but it became very, very important to check like, okay, what's the width on this car seat versus another oh, one? I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also a lot of people wonder if they need to get more than one car seat. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are getting that infant car seat and you have multiple cars, Probably the best thing for you to do is if there's a compatible base, you can get a base for each of your cars. Um, oftentimes the infant car seat will come with one, but if you want to get an extra base for the second car or for grandparents' car, you can do that and easily click it in and out. Um, if you are getting a convertible car seat, those are a little bit harder to move from car to car. So you might want to invest in one per car. Um, and then finally, this is a, a common theme for through a lot of these as well, but um, a lot of people wonder, like, what are you really getting if you spend more money on a product? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to buy the more affordable version um, for car seats? Especially seat? when it comes to car seats. I feel like that yes. everyone worries that if they're not spending a ton, is it really safe? Yes. No, that, that's a huge question. Um, and all car seats sold in the U.S. are safe. They all pass the same safety test. It does not matter how much you spend. Um, oftentimes, the more expensive car seat might come with features that make it easier to install or easier to buckle your child in and out. But I like to emphasize that because everyone's worried about their baby's safety, right? So every car seat sold in the U.S. is safe. Good to know. Yeah. Um, so that said, I know everyone's still wondering, you know, like, but which products did you use? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I will say I registered for the Upper Baby Mesa infant car seat. They now have a V2 version that's very similar to what I still have and use. Um, and this is compatible with the stroller that I got. So that was a big reason why I got that one. Um, and then when my children outgrew that, I kind of graduated to the Graco Extentivit, Extentifit convertible car seat. Um, and I love that one because it allows you to keep your child rear facing for as long as possible. Um, my four-year-old actually, who is, you know, my kids are a little on the smaller side, but he still sits rear facing right now. Okay. So. We actually have that for my husband's car too. So, and we find it very easy to transfer from one, you know, grandparents car yeah. to, which is good when you're in a rush or. Yeah. And then I wanted to note too, that our baby center moms are loving the Kiko key fit 30. Um, so it's a bit more affordable. It snaps in, um, similar to the Abba baby matching stroller and it's easy, very easy to install as well. Um, I know easy to install was really important to us because we didn't really know what we were doing the first time around. So, um, and I'll just note too, that I, I love your tip about the bases. That's exactly what we did with our car seat as well. Just one base in one car, one base in another, and it was easy to pop over, you know, after daycare drop off, or we, we did have to leave the car seat at daycare so that one of us could get it afterwards. Yeah. Um, it does help just to have the one. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, great. So strollers, that's another category that I think a lot of parents stress over. Um, so the big questions to think about here are, how often realistically you think you'll be going on walks. Um, 
now I live in North Carolina. I'm in the suburbs. But when I was having my first son, I lived in New York City and my neighborhood actually had cobblestone streets. So we were like, we need something with good suspension, big wheels. Um, but that can kind of help you do a like cost benefit if you think you're going to be throwing it in the trunk of your car a lot and taking it places definitely check the dimensions of the stroller when it's folded and make sure that will work for your car. Um, and also look at the weight specifications. You want to make sure you can easily like lift and fold it if it's something that you're going to be constantly putting in and out of your trunk. Um, something else to consider is if you think you'll have another child soon and want something that converts into a double or even a triple mm -hmm. stroller, um, there are a lot of great options on the market that do that now. Um, and then this is another category where people are like, do I need multiple strollers? And for that, I would really think about, you know, what is your lifestyle like? Do you anticipate traveling a lot? Mm -hmm. um, in which case, it might make sense for you to get a smaller, lighter weight stroller that's super easy to fold and um, expand so that you can take it on trips. Um, if you're a runner, you know, you might need to get a dedicated running stroller, not need to, but it's nice to be able to get out the door and go for a run with your kid. Um, so these are all things that I would keep in mind as you're considering which stroller is right for you. Do you have a favorite or one that you're going to use this time around or a favorite from one of your other boys? Yeah. Um, so I will say I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this. My husband always teases me about it, but we have four strollers in our garage right now. Um, however, that does mean I've had experience with a lot of different models. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I will say the Upper Baby Vista, which is now the V2, um, but when I got it, it was just the Vista. It's still a very similar product. Um, we really splurged on that and it was very, very worth it for us living in a city at the time. Um, we also knew we might have another child, you know, soon enough to take advantage mm -hmm. of the double stroller capability. Um, and my kids... Again, like caveating that they're a little bit on the smaller side, but I can still get my four-year-old and two-year-old into it as a double stroller. So we've gotten a lot of use out of that. Um, okay. Yeah. One Amazon hack that I like to share whenever I talk about the Up a Baby Vista is that it rarely goes on sale. Um, I really kept an eye out when I was pregnant. I even had like Black Friday when I was pregnant. I was like, it's got to go on oh, sale alert set up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just, it doesn't really. So I used my Amazon completion discount, um, which you can use that on Upper Baby products. Okay. Um, and it, you know, really added up to be able to have that 15% discount there. Oh yeah. Especially when you have four strollers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, we may have gone a little bit overboard. <laughs> well, I, we, I mean, you have, you're going to have three kids now, so yeah, quite the investment. Yeah. Um, and I will say one of the others we have, I won't go through them all mm -hmm. is once my oldest son hit six months old, we got the Thule Urban Glide 2. Um, that's a dedicated running stroller. Uh, it can be a little tricky, even, you know, baby jogger is a brand of strollers, but not everything they make is a dedicated running stroller. If you want to use your stroller for running, you do have to buy something made for that. And the Thule Urban Glide 2 is a great one. Great to know. We did not get a jogging stroller and there were some days that we definitely regretted it, but then we thought, well, if we're going to be jogging, maybe we don't need to bring the baby. Um, but I think it's great. I see them all over our neighborhood as well. So I will also note that um, just looking at our baby center community, that they are really, our moms are really raving about the even flow pivot expand modular stroller. Um, and this seems to be because it can really transition throughout your baby's life. So, you know, it's pretty affordable. The pivot can be configured to hold an infant car seat. This is what I found the most, um, the best thing about it. It can hold an infant car seat, a forward facing toddler seat and a child standing up, which is awesome for a great big family. 
Yeah, absolutely. So versatile. Um, And that's what a lot of our audience really loves about those convertible strollers. You really get a lot of bang for your buck, just like the car seat and then Mm -hmm. about cribs as well. Um, I think high chairs are another thing where, you know, they sit in your kitchen and you really just want to make sure that you're, you love it. It's functional. Can you talk about what we should think about when we're picking out high chairs for our Amazon registry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So first and foremost, think about how much space you have. Um, If it's something that's going to be sitting out all the time, then you need to make sure you have space for it. There are also some really great folding models if you don't have the room to just have a high chair out all the time. Um, And then, like you said, this is going to be something you use a lot that's in your home. So I like to say, like, it's okay to think about what your aesthetic is and want something that will you know, look nice in your home. (laughs) Um, Also, how easy is it to clean? Um, You know, your baby will be flinging sweet potatoes and avocado on it. Um, So this is something you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning. So that's definitely worth thinking about. And then finally, uh, this is another product where convertible options have become really big. So think about like, Do you think you'll just use something for the baby stage or do you want something longer lasting that can transition to when your child becomes a toddler or preschooler? Um, We wanted something like that that would be a little bit more versatile. So we did get the Staka Trip Trap. Um, It comes with a baby seat, but you can buy like a tray for it, a cushion, Um, And it's really great for having your baby at the table with you. If you want to have them with you from day one, they even have a newborn attachment. Um, And we liked it so much. We got a second one when my second son was born and now they're both using it without the baby seat, but it it gives them a little boost um, so they can be at the right height. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it's also pretty like cool looking, like it's not going to be a super big eyesore in the kitchen, which of course, like you were saying, if it's going to be there permanently is sometimes, you know, important. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, Along those lines. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Um, I was just going to say the baby center community moms also really love the great coast slim snacker high chair. Um, It's smaller. It's a more affordable option and it folds up when you're not using it, which is great. I love that. We had something similar to that as well. We actually found that we use the Inglesina um, fast table chair, which at the time we were in a home that had a counter and I was constantly chopping vegetables or doing, you know, cooking and she could be right there with me, which we really loved. Um, It was also very convertible. Like we could take it to a restaurant if they didn't have high chairs or things like that. So we kind of wanted it up off the floor and out of kind of out of sight Mm -hmm. um, if needed. So we really liked that one as well. Yeah, I've tried that. That's a great one as well. Not the easiest to clean sometimes, but you really have, but I loved that you could just throw the cover into the washer, which is awesome when you're, you know, when you have lots of crumbs and spills and apples. Yeah. Yeah. I will say you like, it is worth reading the manual on some of these things. Like sometimes um, the, like there will be a product with fabric. So you'd be like, of course I can throw this in the wash and, you know, um, sometimes Mm -hmm the instructions say not to do that. So you just, it's always good to check. Yeah. Hopefully I was supposed to do that. Who knows? It turned out fine. So (laughs) yeah, I don't know off the top of my head for that particular product. Um, But good to know to just check because I think sometimes you don't know that you can actually just throw it in the wash or Mm -hmm. you can hand wash it. Um, Okay. So bassinets, another huge item. Um, Some, some people use bassinets, some people don't. So can you talk us through what to look for there? Yeah. um, So bassinets can definitely be helpful if you have a smaller space or want to keep your baby right next to your bed and at a similar height, especially when they're in the newborn stage in those first couple of months. Um, It will be something that your baby outgrows like possibly as soon as like three or four months, although some babies can stay in bassinets a little bit longer. Um, and it's just, I like to use this as an opportunity to also remind parents that it is very important to think about safety when it comes to sleep spaces and where your baby's sleeping. 
um, any bassinet or crib or play yard sold in the U.S. meet certain safety standards that mean, you know, as long as your baby is sleeping in there alone on their back, um, mm -hmm. that they will be safe. Um, but as cute as some products are that are more like Moses baskets or mm -hmm. you know, sleep loungers, you do have to be really careful because those can be unsafe, unfortunately. Did you have one that you loved? So I actually didn't use a bassinet um, for my sons. I just, um, I had a mini crib that kind of like fit through the doorway. We could like roll wherever we wanted. Um, so that is different from bigger cribs, but we felt like that was a good solution for us. Um, and a good reminder that, you know, you don't necessarily need to get all of these products that we're talking about. Totally. I actually think we used our bassinet maybe for a couple months, um, but we did love it. So we used the Halo bassinet swivel sleeper. And I thought that the swivel would be great. And it certainly was in the middle of the night when I'm half asleep and don't really fully want to get all the way out of bed. Um, it worked really well for us. And then I think you told me that the latest model of the Halo can detach and you can take it kind of as a very safe sleeping area for your child. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit lighter also than okay. the previous versions, um, which helps when you're like moving it around from place to place for sure. Um, it also goes to show there's tons of different versions as the years go on. So something that I use is probably upgraded by now, but um, awesome. I also, I see a lot of um, questions coming in. If we're going to be posting the links to all of these products, we definitely will. They're also going in the chat here, but we'll send out um, a URL that will have all of our links. Just wanted to throw that out there in case someone has to pop off. Um, so Play Yards, can you walk us through maybe some of the benefits of having one and what to look for when you're looking for one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so these are another thing that like is not absolutely necessary, but can be nice to have, especially worth the investment if you're going to be traveling often and you want to be able to throw this in the trunk of your car and have a safe sleep space for your baby. Um, I didn't get one initially because I lived in an apartment and it was very small. I didn't have a lot of storage and I also didn't have a car, um, but now I do have one and I definitely appreciate being able to take it to grandparents' houses or what have you. Um, so the one that we have that I really love is the Four Moms Breeze Plus Play Yard, which mm -hmm. comes with a bassinet and changer. Um, and the thing that's great about it is it's just so easy to fold and collapse. Um, it is a little bit pricey, however. So um, when I was talking to my mom about what kind she should get at her house, we actually decided to go with the Graco Pack and Play Portable Play Yard. It's okay. only $70. It's a lot more affordable. And it definitely gets the job done just as safe and comfortable as the Four Moms Breeze. But it's just a little bit more of a hassle to fold it and unfold it. But if you're okay with that. It's probably it's pretty light to, to take around. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. We actually, so we also use the play yard. We used it a little bit differently. We put it downstairs when my daughter was young mm -hmm. and we used the Graco pack and play sit and grow play yard. And it came with like a little changing table on top. And then we knew we could safely put her down for a nap um, if we were downstairs. So it was super helpful. I had a C-section. So going up and down the stairs was you know, not in the cards for this first few months. Yeah. So um, it was great to have something downstairs. So just another way to use those portable play yards for sure. Yeah, that, that's a great um, reminder too. A lot of people love to use play yards as like a separate station if you have multiple levels of your house. So they can come in really handy then. Yeah, definitely. So cribs, another huge item that, you know, a lot of people love to put on their registry. It's great for people to go in as a, a group gift sometimes, or a family member loves purchasing the crib. Um, can you talk us through what to look for in a crib? Obviously, that's a super important part of a newborn um, life. So talk us through that, and then maybe one of your favorite cribs. Yeah. Um, so... 
again, you know, I feel like a broken record here, but this is another category where you want to think about longevity. Um, there are a lot of convertible cribs that are worth looking into. Um, that might be, you know, something that turns into a toddler bed and then a day bed, uh, maybe even a full size bed after that. So if you just want to kind of buy one product and be set for several years, keep that in mind when you're choosing your crib. Um, something that was not obvious to me when I was registering is that regular size cribs will not fit through doors without being disassembled um, unless you have a mini crib. So most people kind of put them in the baby's nursery. And if you are having your child sleep next to you, which is recommended for mm -hmm. the first few months that they sleep in your room, but not in your bed, um, that, that's a situation where you might want like a bassinet or a mini crib in your bedroom with you. Okay. Yeah. And then any crib sold in the U.S. and the, is going to meet the latest safety standards. Um, so important to keep that in mind. We really recommend against buying cribs, car seats, other things that have these safety standards secondhand because you want to make sure that what you're getting does meet the latest safety standards. Um, and then one Amazon hack that I wanted to share is it is important to make sure you actively enable group gifting in your settings if you have an Amazon registry. And also there's a setting where you can register for Amazon gift cards. Both of those options make it very easy for people to contribute toward these bigger purchases that, you know, one person might not be able to buy you independently, but a lot of people can chip in and get you this nice item for your nursery. I love that idea. We had a lot of that with cribs, all those big ticket item strollers. Great for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the crib that we ended up going with was the Baby Little Lolly crib. Um, and it is a three in one. We've used it as a toddler bed as well um, and changed it back to a crib for <laughs> oh, my yeah. two year old. Um, but it all, I have to be honest, um, you know, it's got a lot of great like certifications, is made with great materials, but I also just liked how it looked. And, you know, I was going to say it's so cute. I was looking it up earlier today. Very cute. Yeah. Um, and then you had a great option that you wanted to highlight as well, right? From our baby center. Yeah. Our, our baby center parents love the Graco Benton four in one convert convertible crib. And just like the baby Leto, um, it can kind of grow with your baby and toddler. Uh, we, so my daughter's three and a half, we're still using the toddler version of her crib and mm -hmm. just as a great transition because, you know, we didn't want to just totally introduce this big, scary bed when she's so young. So um, you can get tons of bang for your buck in the, with these types of cribs for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. One thing I like to call out about cribs too is that um, they do not usually come with the mattress. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to purchase that separately, unfortunately. And if you are planning on converting it, it's worth looking to see if you have to buy any add-ons to be able to convert it. Um, if you can, I would recommend going ahead and doing that upfront just on the off chance that that crib style is no longer made, you know, two years down the road. I was going to say that that's what we did. And my husband <laughs> gave me a hard time because it was just stored in our garage until the <laughs> last few months. And he's like, we're never going to use this, but it's out now and we've used it. So definitely yeah. worth doing that at the beginning or registering for it. So yes. Yeah. Letting your friends and family help you get that. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So gliders and rocking chairs, we all have different preferences on what we like. Um, do you want to talk briefly a little bit about rocking chairs, gliders, and what you love? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so definitely measure the space in your room where you want to put it. Look at the measurements online. Make sure that it will fit in your space. That's super important. Um, look into what the fabric is and how easy it is to clean because you might not think of this as being something that you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning, but I promise you, your baby will be spitting up. You'll be, you know, spilling formula or breast milk. You, having something that's easy to clean will definitely come in handy. Um, and then think about if you want something that reclines or comes with an ottoman. Um, I also like to flag that you might not think to buy a glider or a rocking chair off of Amazon, but actually 
This is where Baby Center's community of millions of parents is so helpful. We have testimonials from dozens and dozens of moms who can help you get a sense of the pros and cons of each option. And so you can re feel really confident adding it to your registry and having it delivered to your door, um, even ordering it online. Um, and one of those gliders that our community really loves, I've also tried it personally. Um, it was actually at one of my workplaces in the pumping room okay. is the Storkcraft um, premium hoop glider and ottoman. Um, it, it's so nice that it comes with an ottoman and it's really comfy at a pretty accessible price point. Awesome. I was going to say also many parents, many baby center parents love the nursery work sleepy time rocker. Um, super stylish looking and modern feels pretty cute in boy or girl nursery. I wish I would have known about this one because I'm loving how it looks and um, it looks just like I prefer a rocker. So sometimes mm -hmm. it can be hard to find the exact one, but this one looks like a great option. Great. So we are speeding quite along. We have lots of products to still get through. Uh, I love to talk about baby carriers. I used a baby carrier multiple times a day. So would love to hear your thoughts on what to look for in a baby carrier and your favorites. Yeah, the, the two main categories here to consider are a wrap carrier, which depending on the style, it might just be like a really long piece of fabric that comes with instructions for how to kind of uh, wrap it all up and keep your baby close to you, which is really sweet, um, versus a soft structured carrier, which usually comes with buckles and straps. Um, and the soft structured carriers, sometimes also you can like wear your baby on your back or your hip, depending on the model. Um, they usually come with multiple carrying positions. Um, and then if you're really adventurous, you can even consider like a backpack carrier. There are some kind of other categories here. Um, but I think my most important recommendation is really to check the weight and milestone recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the wrap carriers in general, it depends on the version that you get, are usually for smaller babies, don't have as long a shelf life um, versus the soft structured carriers. Um, I think the one I have, you could start using at eight pounds. I remember because my boys were both under six pounds when they were born and I had to wait a while <laughs> to start using them. Um, Same here. Yeah, yeah, tiny babies. But then they were able to use them until they were like 18 months old, which was kind of nice. That's awesome. We, uh, we loved our baby carrier. I felt like, so my daughter had colic. And so that like witching hour at nighttime was always in the carrier, always a walk. I found the cloth ones very confusing and hard to put on. So mm -hmm. we went with the baby Bjorn baby carrier mini and just absolutely loved it. She loved it. Um, it kept us all sane during that five mm -hmm. o'clock period, um, or a cat nap. She could go, um, face outward or inward. And so mm -hmm. it was a time too for us to bond. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sweet. And it's nice also to be hands-free so you can like do some other things. Um, mm -hmm. We use the Becco Gemini baby carrier, um, mm -hmm. which we really loved as well. Um, and it's nice that it's only $80 on the Amazon, um, which is on the lower end for a soft structured carrier. Definitely. So the last big ticket item I think we probably have time to go through is a baby bouncer rocker. There are so many different kinds. Oh my goodness. Um, so just talk us through what to look for there and some of your favorites. Yeah. Um, so one of the big things that you might not think about is I like to say check if something is battery operated or not. Um, yeah. Battery operated can be great because in this category for bouncers or rockers, it will like move itself or, or if it plugs into the wall, of course, that falls into the same category. Um, sometimes they play music or sounds as well, which baby might like, um, might annoy the adults in the room. So <laughs> there are some trade-offs um, versus there are other models that don't require any power. Um, you know, you can kind of rock them or sometimes your baby's motion will activate them. Mm -hmm. um, no right answer here, just pros and cons to both. Um, does it fold down for easy storage? If it's something that you don't want sitting out all the time, that's a very important question. Um, again, what are the cleaning instructions? Does it have removable seat covers? Um, because spit up and blowouts are going yeah. to happen. Definitely. 
Yeah. Um, and then I also like to remind parents, like, keep in mind, it might take your baby a few tries to like a bouncer or a rocker, even like we were talking about the carrier earlier. Um, I hear from friends all the time. They're like, oh, my baby hates their bouncer, um, you know, and the truth is like the world is a brand new overwhelming place to your baby. Um, if you keep trying, they might on like the third or fourth try actually really come to love it. So don't give up. Yeah. The first time is hard. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and my favorite in this category, I will say I didn't have one for my first son and it was totally fine. Uh -huh. Um, for my second, a friend had me borrow the baby Bjorn bouncer balance soft and my second son just like loved it. The toy bar was like the first toy that he really played with. So we'll definitely be using it again this time around. Same over here. That was absolutely besides the carrier. This was our number one used prop. I mean, we would just sit her there cooking a meal, eating dinner, just knew that she was in a safe place. And we had the toy bar as well. There's actually a really great one on Amazon um, that she absolutely loves super bright colors. Um, so we love that one as well. So I was thinking we should head um, to the next section of topics. Um, you know, we went through like our most loved products. I think this was so fun because it was like a walk down memory lane for me. Um, and for you, you're gearing up to do it all over again. So that's awesome. Um, so you walked us through the big ticket items. I was thinking you could talk us through quickly some of the things um, that parents may not think they can actually add to their Amazon registries. I know some of the stuff on this list I certainly didn't have on mine. And so if you'll walk us through some of those things. Yeah. Um, so first I think like diapers, wipes, and other baby care items, um, those are definitely something you want to register for. They might not feel as like fun or glamorous as some of the other products, but you will be using them a lot. Um, newborns have to have their diaper changed every two to three hours, kind of at a minimum. So you're going to be using eight to 12 a day. Um, and I really just recommend thinking about the fact also that like your baby's going to be growing very quickly. So, you know, one big box of newborn diapers, maybe one each of sizes like one through three is great um, because your baby's only going to be in newborn sizes for so long. Yeah. Um, or creamy in my case, we had like the tiniest diapers. It was so sweet and cute. <laughs> Yeah, the those creamy diapers are so tiny. <laughs> um, one Amazon hack that you can use is um, another setting. You can enable, you register for a diaper fund in your settings. And that way people can contribute Amazon gift cards that you can use toward diapers, which is great. Um, I think if very quickly we can go through, like I used Pamper Swaddlers, um, but this is another thing where like your baby will probably have preferences. So I recommended registering for those boxes of diapers. Try to keep the bigger sizes sealed until you know your baby likes that kind of diapers so that you can return them if need be. We also use swaddlers and then we used Huggies overnight mm -hmm. for kind of a thicker option for nighttime because I was all sorts of worried about that. Um, yeah, great items. What about any other items that you think maybe some postpartum care items? Yeah, um, a lot of people don't think to put postpartum care items on their registry, um, but you are going to really benefit from if you're breastfeeding, nipple cream or items like postpartum underwear. Um, I will say there's no reason to be embarrassed to add these items to your registry. Um, so people want to support you and also your baby. Um, however, if you plan on purchasing them, sell, them yourself and you're a little bit squeamish about your father-in-law seeing it, um, you can also set it to private, put it on your registry, and then you can use that completion discount we've been talking about toward them. And I love this last, um, well, there's a couple awesome last tips um, about adding household items to your Amazon registry. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the great things about Amazon, right? Is that you can put toilet paper. If you're moving into a new house, you can put an end table. Um, these are all things that your friends and family can help buy for you. And you can always check under the, your registry tab, if they're eligible for a completion discount. Also, some of them will be. 
Um, and then also another thing that you can register for is actually physical gift cards on Amazon. So places like Starbucks or Grubhub. Um, so, you know, it kind of is a, a meal train in a way too, which is nice. I love that. Um, I had no idea you could actually do that. So that's a Starbucks is definitely key for the new parent. <laughs> Need awesome. that caffeine. So there's a lot of questions coming in about kind of like the main takeaways as, you know, a first time parent, what do they need to know? What would be the one item? I know we have here, um, you know, some things that maybe you didn't, you think you might should register for, but maybe you didn't use. I think mm -hmm. that kind of plays into it. Do you want to quickly go through some of those items that you didn't use that often that were on your registry? Yeah. Uh, so wipe warmers, I didn't use. Um, babies are fine with room temperature wipes. Bottle sterilizer just kind of took up counter space for us. Dishwasher, as it turns out, is fine. Um, nightlight, babies actually sleep better in complete darkness. Um, and then the last one I'll flag here is crib bumpers, um, which are actually unsafe. So you definitely mm -hmm. want to skip those on your registry. Not bad. Um, okay, we have some specific questions coming in, but I want to make sure you have, there's a few just last things that mm -hmm. we could highlight about Amazon. Um, just some of the pieces of advice you've learned along the way, if you want to go through those, and then we'll get to some questions. Sure. Um, so we've talked about how different babies like different things. That's been one of my biggest learnings. There will be trial and error. That's why Amazon's return policy is so great. We've talked about that few times now. Um, also a great tip is to check your registry shortly before you send it out to friends and family. Make sure everything's in stock and that, you know, you didn't miss adding anything you wanted to. Um, and finally, you know, just make sure to take advantage of that completion discount we talked about. You can start using it up to 60 days before your due date and then 90 days afterward. So you can even continue to add items after your baby arrives as you learn what you and your baby like love that. and then order it yourself and get that discount. I love that. Great. Okay. So we have a lot of questions coming in and I know we kind of skipped over pumps and mm -hmm. there's some questions about breast pumps. Should we go through, um, you know, some of the items that you could add there on Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for breast pumps, I do like to remind everyone, start out by checking with your insurance um, because your insurance might cover certain pumps. And if you want something that's totally free, that's an important option to look into. Um, a lot of people in are interested nowadays also in hands-free pumps. Um, again, check with insurance. You might get partial coverage, but for by and large, it's unlikely that you'll get full coverage for a hands-free pump. Um, so that's something you could add to your registry. And we have the kind of tried and true models that have been around the longest, the LV and the Willow. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are so many new hands-free pumps to the scene, um, like Mom Cozy has one and Medela, and those are often at lower price points too. So they're worth looking into. Awesome. I did not have a hands-free pump and I was an exclusive pumper. So that would have been very helpful. So good to know there. Um, I see a ton of comments coming in that this, you know, they're wanting the links, they're adding these products mm -hmm. to their Amazon registry. We're so happy to hear that because these are all of our favorite products. Um, you will get a link. Um, I know there's some still some questions coming in about how to find all of these products and we will definitely be sharing um, a link to all of these products. Um, and I'm going to take a couple more questions if we have some time, which we do. Um, Whit, Robin, what do you guys advise for a new first time boy mom looking to live minimally? Um, yeah, I mean, I can definitely commiserate with that. Uh, three boys. And when I had my first, we were in a like 800 square foot apartment, maybe. <laughs> um, so I was just really think about like, you know, what you want to make your life more convenient, certain products, and then others that you think you can skip. Um, sorry, I know that's kind of a, a cop out, but like for, uh, to give an example for us, we knew at that time that it was super easy to just like take diapers out to the trash 
And Mm -hmm. so we said like, okay, we're not going to get a diaper pail because we'd rather have like a little grocery bag of a few diapers, take them out immediately. And that's something we don't need taking up space in our home. Um, So, you know, really try to like think through everything like that. Look for opportunities also for products that fold up and can be put away if you're concerned about space. Those are probably my biggest tips in that area. Awesome. We have a question about something that may may or may not be necessary, a baby wipe warmer. What would you say, Robin? Yeah, um, I would say it's not necessary. I was very concerned with my first son that he would think the wipes were too cold. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, especially he was born in December, so winter baby. Um, and I was shocked by how quickly he did get used to the room temperature wipes. And I was like, thank goodness we didn't get a wipe warmer. So I would probably skip that. I think we did get one and it really just sat in the box and we, cause it was very big and large. Mm-hmm. And we, just, we thought we'll always have to use a wipe warmer, you know? So it yeah. just depends. if that's something that you want, go for it. But it's definitely one of those, not a must have. Um, yeah. This is a question I've seen come through quite a bit. When would you say is the right time to post your registry? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say if you're having a baby shower, um, definitely send it out at least a month in advance of your baby shower so that people have plenty of time to buy you items. You can always share earlier than that. Um, but you do want to give people plenty of time to pick out something that they're excited to gift you. If you're not having a baby shower, um, probably in the second trimester sometime is a good idea. Um, and I like to recommend that because, you know, you just never know what will happen or when you'll get the urge to start nesting will strike. Um, so it's nice to start getting things delivered to you and be able to set them up a little bit sooner rather than later. And you can always add to it along the way if you yes. get a thing for sure, or decide you need extras of something like you mentioned. Yes. Mm-hmm. Great. So we are close to time, but I think it might be fun to do, you know, maybe like your biggest overall tip about be- Amazon baby registry, whether that's a mistake you made or just your favorite item or all of the above. One last parting thought um, to share with our audience. Yeah. um, Gosh. Okay. I don't, this is a tip we didn't uh, get to earlier. So I'm excited to have a chance to share it. Um, So for clothes, people will give you a lot of clothes. It's one of the most fun things to buy for babies, right? Um, I would say, except for a few newborn outfits, really try to resist the urge to cut off the tags and wash everything And that's because like, we talked about this a little bit earlier, how we both had small babies. Um, But you just, you don't know how big your baby is going to be before they're born. Um, So it's entirely possible that those clothes won't fit them or won't be seasonally appropriate when, you know, it would be the right time to wear them due to your baby's Mm -hmm. body size. Um, So that can really save you a lot if you keep the tags on and are able to return them. Such a good tip. I mean, like I mentioned, we had a preemie and I felt like the clothing that I registered for and that I got just did not um, match up with her Mm -hmm. similarly appropriate. And so it's great to know too that you can return to Amazon and get something that does fit. That's great. Yeah. This has been so fun. I can't believe it's already been an hour, Robin. Um, this has just been such a great conversation and it's so exciting to see everyone adding these things to their registry and asking questions and talking with the other audience members. This is just so fun to see. Um, and I think it was super helpful for parents as well. So thank you so much, Robin. Um, we are very lucky to have you in-house at Baby Center. Um, So, and I cannot wait to see pictures of your newest edition very, very soon. I'm glad we got this webinar in beforehand. Um, I have a few housekeeping, just close out um, reminders for everyone. Please share now your Amazon registry link um, for a chance to win a $300 gift card to Amazon. We're gonna be emailing you shortly after the event um, if you win. And then also a reminder again, just that we have a recording coming again with the, 
um, links to all the products we talked about. There's tons of links. I know it was hard to keep track. So we'll send that out to everyone. And just a big thank you to Robin, of course, and to Amazon for sponsoring this event. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation and definitely a walk down memory lane for me. Um, thank you to everyone who joined, to my Baby Center team, and just everyone for helping us pull off the event. Um, we will see you at the next Baby Center Answers event soon.